Hi, and welcome to this podcast. In the next few minutes, we'll discuss some issues you may be having with digital TV. Since satellite and cable customers can call their customer service reps when they have problems, we'll be discussing over-the-air reception with antennas only. Many over-the-air reception issues are hard to troubleshoot. The signals are invisible, but react the same as RF signals have from the very beginning of broadcasting. TV signals travel at the speed of light and in straight lines. They can also bounce off buildings, trees, the ground and the Earth's atmosphere. They travel like a ball on a pool table when it hits the bumpers, and the bounces can add or subtract from the main signal depending on the phase relationship of the two signals. That's why a good directional antenna is desirable for digital signals. It helps receive the main signal while rejecting stray signals that are bouncing and delayed in time. A simple loop antenna may work in your area, but the long rabbit ear style antennas are mainly for VHF signals and may not work well with UHF signals. While VHF stands for very high frequencies, UHF stands for ultra high frequencies. Most UHF signals have a wavelength of around 2 feet. The antenna is the key component for successful over the air reception. An amplifier does not add signals the antenna does not see. It can only boost the signals from the antenna to overcome the loss in the down lead cable, splitters and so forth. In many cases amps will cause more issues than they remedy. That's because amps will amplify everything. Including unwanted signals and noise. A noisy signal can confuse a digital tuner and cause it to freeze, have blocks, or go completely away. So, how can you figure out what is causing your reception issues without expensive equipment? One of the best tools is built into most modern TVs and converter boxes. The signal meter function can tell you a great deal about how your antenna is performing. Digital is not like the old analog signals, where the highest signal provided the highest picture quality. In digital, the quality stays the same until the signal is too high or too low to lock onto the streams. That's right. Too much signal causes the same effect as too little signal strength. It is easy to overdrive the receiver and cause issues. So the first step in testing your system is to go into the menu and select the channel setup option. You can view the signal quality of each channel in your area, and it's a good idea to write them down now for reference. Remember signals will be affected by seasons, and you may have to tweak the antenna each spring and fall. Once you have the signal numbers recorded for each channel, you can experiment on your system to see if things improve or worsen. You will want to keep these numbers for reference all year. If the numbers are varying wildly, then your antenna is not locked onto the signal properly. It is normal for the signal to vary a little up and down, but not all the way to zero and back to the 90s. Your target signal strength should be between 80 and 100, but anything between 80 and 90 is perfectly fine. Once you have your reference numbers for all channels, pick the weakest one. Antennas are not linear, meaning they do not react to every channel the same. Your antenna may have a gain chart, which shows how much gain it provides at the different frequencies. Since the lower channels travel through the air with less loss, antennas are designed with more gain for the higher channels. Since the digital conversion, you are only concerned with channels 7 through 51 as the other channels are now turned over to other uses. All stations are now in their final channels, which may not be the same actual channels as the DTV signal will display the numbers you are used to. In the Raleigh-Durham market, the channel numbers are WTVD on 11, WRPX on 15, WNCN on 17, WRDC on 27, WLFL on 28. WRAL on 48, and WRAZ on 49. Using the actual over-the-air channel numbers, you can plot the signal strength you recorded earlier by a channel. You may now see a pattern in the numbers. For example, if WRAL and WRAZ do not come in as well, your antenna is not tuned to the higher channels, and conversely, if WTVD and WNCN are not as strong, your antenna is not performing well on the lower frequencies. Keep in mind, the lower channels usually travel in the air the best, but trees, hills, and buildings can have a big impact on all channels. After looking at the channels and their signal meter readings in sequential order, you can tell if your antenna is picking up all the signals equally. WTVD is the only VHF station in the Raleigh-Durham market, but it is close enough to the UHF band that a standard UHF antenna can receive them fine. At long distances from the transmitters, and combination VHF and UHF antenna would be desirable. Mounting the antenna outdoors is the best way to receive the signals, but attics are a good alternative. You may be able to mount an antenna on the side of your house or apartment, or on a balcony. You can disguise it with a plant or some other creative way. It may be impossible to point the antenna towards a station's transmitters, but it may work even aimed into the living room and through walls. You would have to experiment a little, but it's worth a shot. 
the signal meter in the TV menus will help you aim the antenna. Try to maximize the signal for all channels, and don't worry about overdriving the tuner just yet. If your numbers are low, such as 40 to 50%, an amplifier may help. Choose one that has an adjustable gain control on it, and solder it with it turned all the way down. While watching the signal meter, increase the gain slowly, and watch as the signal increases. You may notice a point where it does not get any stronger, and in fact, begin to reduce the signal. Turn the gain back down a bit to that peak. Turning the gain all the way up will amplify the noise as well as the signal, and that will cause the same symptoms as too low a signal. Then check the signal on all other channels, and see how stable the meter is. All amplifiers actually create some undesirable noise, so it's a good idea to only purchase good amplifiers, and avoid cheaper units. The same goes for signal splitters to feed multiple sets. Make sure they are rated for 2 GHz and only use RG6 cables. All connections must be shiny and dry. Water can cause major issues on outdoor connections. That's all the time we have for this podcast. You can go to our blog at www.etv.myncblogs.com for more information. We will see you next time.